cool. What's up? What's up? Hey, how are you? I'm good, man. How you doing? Good. A little nervous, but <laughs> sorry about the whole confusion earlier. I mean, I know it was like a lot. Yeah, so. With hey, man, we're trying to get it all together, man. The whole country's trying to get it together, so. Right, hey. You ain't saying nothing but the truth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for having me, first of all. You know, I always got to thank you. Absolutely. It's been, it's, it was, uh, thank you for agreeing to doing this. Um, you know, mm -hmm. thank you for, you know, um, acting and putting your, uh, you know, just bringing joy to so many people's lives for doing Daredevil, doing your thing out here. And just thank you so much. So thank you. I appreciate it. Man. I appreciate Absolutely. It. So my first question to you would be, is uh, what got you into acting? Uh, just uh, the art of storytelling, you know, watching movies, you know, uh, that inspired me and wanted to be a part of that whole fraternity of right. just of just acting you know i had never done it before i didn't participate in like school plays or anything like that but just uh you know wanting to you know be on the stage having a love for uh, 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 a certain art that's right. how i got into it that's yeah. awesome what was your first acting experience like how would you describe it uh, oh man i would say nervous because you know i'm on stage and i'm thinking I got to remember all those lines, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that ain't gonna gosh. happen. That ain't gonna right. happen. And, you know, and you got people that come in and they, you know, they're expecting you to be great. You know, you go buy a ticket, you go see a show, and they want it to be awesome. So the expectation of it, the nerves were just working. The adrenaline, right. the anticipation. But once you get on stage, you're, you're trained, you're ready. And, uh, you know, something just takes over you and you go and you do what you were trained to do. Right. Okay. What did you? What was your first role? Like, what did you play? Like, what was your first job? I oh, guess. Television or uh, on stage? Because I've done television and stage. Both. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, both. Well, the first one was just on stage. Uh, uh, we did a play called "The Mad Woman of Shio." You know, I played the president before there was a black president. <laughs> <laughs> Predicting the future. Well, there, was, I see. That was, yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, but my first uh, television. Uh, Show was uh, Third Watch. Uh, if you remember that show way back, uh, fireman show, police, and I played like a courtroom baby. I had like five lines, man, and I was, you know, over overrunning those five lines. Like <laughs> we got to get this right, man. Right. We got to get this pocket number down, you know. So, right. But it was amazing to see, you know, your family seeing you on television. All right. Uh, train a character. Mm -hmm. Right. I was gonna. I was about to ask. You know, you always seem so involved with like the police department and stuff like Brett Mahoney, then I, I, you were in CSI, if I'm correct, or yeah. Uh, Law and Order. The Law, Law and order. order. Law and Order, okay, yeah, right. The Blind Spot, the Blacklist. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I played my number, my role, uh, number of cops. Uh, I always say that it prepared me for Brett Mahoney, you know? Right. To do that, that, that amount of cop. Because sometimes as an actor, you don't have that, that, that blessing to, you know, choose the role that you want to be in, you right. know? You have, some people call it typecasting or whatever, mm -hmm. but, you know, it works for you. It works right. for you. Absolutely. It definitely works for you. Um, so what would you say, what was your worst experience as an actor so far? Oh, wow. You're coming with the easy questions, <laughs> <laughs> Worst experience? Uh, you know, I, I always say that acting is like a blue collar job. You know, sometimes it's not all glitz and glamour. Right. So sometimes we work like in freezing cold weather. Oh. You know, it's raining and you have to do your scene. And you're like looking like the weather is changing on me. So I would say one of the worst experiences is just, you know, doing a scene and freezing weather, you know? Oh, yeah. I, I did a, a horror movie called Ghost in the Graveyard. And oh, it was okay. snowing it was up north. And, you know, you're, you're doing a scene and, you know, there's smoke coming out of your mouth and it's just cold out there, you know, and right. you have to pretend that it's not freezing cold. You know, you got on these Under Armour stuff, right. but it's, it's cold. But I would say those experiences, you know, as an actor, these are some of the taxing things that we have to go through, you know? Right. Yeah, I could only imagine. Geez, like I mean, like I see the roles in there, like <laughs> the tundra and our in Antarctica. It's like, oh, it has to be yeah. terrible. Ask me the yeah, it's hard, man. Sometimes it's hard, you know. And you know, one minute you're out there in the snow, you know, it's sunny out, and then they got, and then like ten minutes later, it's like get an umbrella. It's starting to rain, <laughs> so now the whole dynamic of the scene has changed because now right. you got a trench coat on and you got an umbrella, right. so you just the dynamic just changed. 
Right, right. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, what would you say was your best experience? My best experience? Yeah. Uh, I would say the, 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 the ambulance fall thing on, on The Punisher. There's a scene where I'm driving. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. I remember yeah, that yeah, exact yeah. scene. So, you know, so that whole thing is shot in green screen. I had never done green screen before. Okay. You know, yeah, because, you know, I'm not driving on an interstate going 100 miles an hour with too much <laughs> right. shooting. Right. So to sit in an ambulance for, like, eight hours, you know, with a director yelling, hard right, hard left, or, you know, or, you know working with all these props. You got a walkie-talkie. You got a cell phone. You're driving. Right. You know, you got... You look out the window and there's like, you know, just cameras, you know, staring inside the windows. Yeah. So that was a good experience for me, man. And uh, the hydraulics of the, the actual fall, John and I were actually in the ambulance, like maybe 18, 20 feet in the air oh, okay. with no window. With, with a, you know, we did that a few times. So we climbed up a ladder and it came down. Now, as far as Daredevil is concerned, one of the best experiences is that I guess getting promoted, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that, that's you know, good. You know, changing uniforms, man, it, it helps, you know? A lot right. of things come into playing a character when, you know, you got your wardrobe going on. Yeah, yeah. You know, you got the badge out, you know? That, that stuff matters, dude. You know, it's one thing wearing the blues, but now you're getting fitted for suits. Suits, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 that matters, man, that matters. <laughs> yeah wow that's awesome yeah what what are some of your other hobbies besides acting uh i like to read a lot um i like to work out you know keep the body going yeah keep this old car working uh i spend time with my family i'm very we got a very tight family i cherish my friendship go see friends and stuff uh those are some of my hobbies uh i'm a big tennis fan you know i love the u.s open i love sports right. big saints from new orleans there you so go. i go to a lot of games that's awesome. It's like I said, we can't go to games now. I mean, we're stuck in our I house. Know, I know. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't even know if we're going to have a season for anything. Right. Right. I know the NBA you know, so, is doing you know, stuff and baseball is doing their thing too, but it's not the same, yeah. you know? Yeah. I can see baseball, but I'm not sure about, you know, the football because of the stadiums being so tight. Right. But we can still watch it. I mean, if, if, they're, if they're good with it. You know? Right. This, is, this whole corona thing is messing up everything. It's, yeah, you telling me, man. I mean, Hollywood is pretty much closed, man. All of our auditions are, like, on tape now, you know? Oh, uh, man. I mean, for being on tape, sometimes when, you know, L.A. gives you an audition, you know, we, we would fly over. Now it's like, get a camera, put yourself on tape, and that's how we're being seen now. It's not mm. the same thing as walking into a room, talking to a person, feeling that chemistry, you know, getting that immediate feedback. We're not getting that right now at right. this point. You know, hopefully that changes soon. I know, yeah. I know some stuff is starting production. I was talking to uh, Lauren Mary Kim. She did the stunts for Electra for uh, Defenders. Oh, right on, right on. Yeah, yeah. I met her. I met her like, pretty close to the last day uh, of filming. Oh, awesome. That's really dope. So I was talking to her, and she said to me that it's like, some of her friends are like going to like Germany or they're doing stuff in Germany. There's nothing in the U.S. right now. They're like going abroad. I'm just like, this is insane. Like, who would have thought we would have been in this for so long? Four million cases. Like, this is insane. Four million cases. Yeah, man. I, I thought maybe we would be shooting. There's projects on hold. There's projects that right. have just pulled out, not knowing what's what's uh, next. Right. So and a lot of projects are just looking forward to 2021. Right. That's it. Because right now, I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't have an answer for anything. But right. I am waiting until November to see what happens with Daredevil and the whole Netflix, you know, thing. So yeah. I'm waiting like, because uh, the uh, their contract ends in November. November, to see right? If it'll be, you know, put into the MCU or finding another platform, or even if the show will come back. You know? Right. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to talk more about that. Um, what roles do you gravitate more towards as an actor? Uh, roles of authority. You know, I'm, I'm probably military. Uh, I like giving away information. I like revealing uh, information to move the storyline along. I love those type of roles. Um, so I'm drawn to those a lot. Um, you know, we all like to, you know, want to be smarter than we really are. So hey. <laughs> I, I like exercising my tongue to make them sound great, you know, as I reveal Hell's Kitchen is about to explode or something. 
You know? Yeah, so I, I remember that scene too. I, I, I like making the trailer delivering those big lines, you know, or right. does this look like the work of a dead man to you? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, 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 I gravitate to those uh, catchphrases. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I would, too, I would too, if I were to get into it. I, I, I for, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I can feel well, that. The writers, I mean, they write this stuff. It's up to you to bring it to life. You know, right. give it some type of energy. Right. Who are some actors you would like to work with in the future that you haven't worked with yet? Oh wow, that's a neat man. You, you easy man. I, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get harder. Trust me. We'll get harder. Trust me. You're too easy, man. We can talk all day. Um, <laughs> I mean, I want to work with. You know, Denzel Washington. I want to work with Al Pacino, you know, a De Niro. I want to work for Quentin Tarantino. Just give me one line as a waiter, you know. <laughs> I, would take that, I would take that line, you know. Uh, so those are some of the people, you know, Angelina Jolie, people that I watched growing up. Yes. I want to work with. I don't have to put the honor, you know, to work with people like Kevin Bacon. And, and uh, just, just, I was an American gangster. Denzel was in there. But just more... More to bite off of, you know, right. more of a story. Well, yep. Um, oops, paper stuck together. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Take it time, <laughs> um, <laughs> which, what do you enjoy working on more, movies or television series? Well, you know, they're one and the same sometimes. You know, with movies, uh, you have a set schedule, right. which, you know, you can shoot in 20 days. Uh, Television sometimes, like when you have a series like Daredevil and, you know, there's so many platforms like Hulu and all that stuff. Yeah. You got six months. You got a lot of time to dig into your character a lot deeper than a movie would because a movie's only 20 days when you got, like, a series running for, like, Law & Order. I don't know, been running for, like, 20-some years. They got they shoot, like, Jeez. 10 months out of the year. Right. So I, I think giving that kind of ease... On television, I think I would love that a lot more. But, you know, they all have a, you know, you meet somewhere in a happy meeting. Now, stage is much different. You rehearse the same lines as the, and you can explore why you want to go there. Like I tell people with television and movies, the only work that we have is from action to cut. Most of your homework is done at home, you know. Uh, right. It's done outside of being on set. Sorry about that, Text. Oh no, it's fine. That's happening to me too. So, yeah. Oh, man. so yeah, it's just a difference, you know. It, it depends on what the role is, uh, what's the temperature of where you're shooting. You know, there's a different vibe on every set that right. you're on. You know, but you know, it, whether it's action, there's only a few genres. There's comedy, you know, drama, Horror, action, yeah. Drama. You know, it depends on what what you're working with, right? Yeah, yeah, I completely get that. Yeah, I was, uh, to go back to Lauren Mary Kim interview, I was talking to her, she was like, what's she say? Hold on. You gotta give me a second. My brain is, is all over. Uh, okay, so she, I think she said she preferred movies because it's just like, you know, it's it's easy, you know, it's kind of has like a flow to, you know what I'm saying? So, okay. Yeah, okay. so. She just These prefers- have a different rhythm, man, you know? It's right. a different rhythm for everybody, you know? Right. Someone asked me, was I a method actor? I was like a method actor. I was like, whatever method works for you. I mean, when you call me a lazy ass, <laughs> you know, like, like you know, uh, whatever works for you, man. If you got to read a lot, yeah, go right. read. <laughs> if you feel like you're playing a boxer, you want to hang out in the gym all day, go. You know, <laughs> right? I <laughs> method actor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, wow, that was a good one. Oh, <laughs> who inspires you personally in your day to day life? My mother did. You know, she just passed away. Oh, um, peace, man. That January, so she inspired me to keep going, keep pushing, uh, choosing a job. You know, where I'm from, saying that hey, I want to grow up to be famous or being an actor wasn't something that the kids spoke about. Mm. You know, and me being in the military, getting out, saying hey, I want to do this as a career you know i was looked at like what you, you want to do that like yeah. what a journey so she kept it going for me on my bad days because you will have your bad days of course and you know you will think that you're right to play every role right that you know what i mean because it's 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 you feel you can do everything but sometimes they're looking for a particular type you're too right. tall 
too young, too short, you know, you know this, that, cool. and the, yeah. You know, everything comes into factor because when you walk into a room, you want every role you audition for. Right. And that's just not the case all the time. Right. I can fully so feel inspired that. Me. She inspired me. Yes. That's awesome. That's awesome inspiration to have. My stepfather to me was, he passed away in October, so that's my... So, well, you understand, yeah. Yeah, most definitely. I completely understand where you're coming from. So, you know, he kept me going. That's why I do this. You know, I yeah. mean, I wish I would have started before he passed. Cause, uh, I started doing this in April because I was just, I don't, it kind of started, sorry to make this about me, but, you know, just a little. <laughs> just a, no, 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 man, we're having a conversation. Man. Yeah, just, just a little bit about me. I was, um, this album came out for, I don't know if you heard the Grey Days, but they, I was, uh. I was following this album closely, and I would just—I just thought of the—I don't know—it just popped into my head. I was like, you know what? Let me ask one of the band members for an interview. And I was like, this is this isn't gonna work. This is stupid. And I mm -hmm. asked, and they said yes. I—I I was just like, wait, what? In a heart, I was like, hold on, I gotta take a breath. You know, was, this is all I gotta do is ask, and, and sometimes you'll get a yes, right? You know, yeah, you'll get a I, yes. And I was just so it shocked. It only right. takes one minute, man. You know? Absolutely. And that has, has been a great experience interviewing you, interviewing all these other musicians and stuff. You're, you're my first actor that I've interviewed. So thank you for that, too. So. Oh, wow. I'm the first. Wow, man. I, I appreciate that, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're the first one. And it's been a, it's great. We're having a great time here. So, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, first one. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah, it. I've been trying to branch out for so long, too, because I've just been doing musicians. I don't have a problem with musicians. Like, I love music, but I've just been wanting right. to do, like, actors and athletes and, you yeah, know. You can do athletes. You can do all, 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 all walks of life. But writers, screenwriters, right. producers, right. you know, get them all on the show. Why not? Right, absolutely, right, right. 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 This is collaboration for doing Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we don't do this alone. Right, right, absolutely, yep. You got so many people that are involved, like the stunt coordinator, you know, the, the photographer, cinematographer. It's so much. Like, it's just, like, a lot of people that go behind a show like that, so. Yeah, it set the stage, man. It set the tone. I mean, just from walking in in the morning, you know, you're going in hair and makeup, you're sitting in the chair, and the conversation you might have with the, the makeup artist and the music she's playing or whatever, or he's playing. Right. You know, put the tone for your day and the lighting guys. and You're getting mic. So a lot of, you know, big up to the people that, that get us together, that get us to, to give you guys a good performance. Right. That reminds me of hearing about the set for Black Panther. Uh, when they were recording Black Panther, they did, like, tribal drums to, like, sort of set where they're at. I, th I think that's really freaking cool. It helps. Right. Everything helps. Man. I tell you, I'll sit in that trailer and I come in my clothes like this. But as soon as I put that suit on and the badge goes around my neck, it it it, it becomes that character and shifts. Just right. it just shifts. Right. I don't know what it is, but it shifts. The yeah, power of authority just, right. just comes over you. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I didn't think of it like that actually, because when I first heard that Black Panther was using tribal drums. I was like, this is cool, but like, what is the purpose? But then right, right. as I went on and they talked about it, I was like, that makes sense. That really it makes sense. sense. Right. It, and it's all Wakanda forever. Everybody, they, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We got to get that sequel going. <laughs> yeah, we got to get Black Panther 2 going, you know? Absolutely. Hopefully. I really want this. Uh, I just, when, we, when I talk about like projects with uh, some big time celebrities, they just talk about how mm -hmm. like, Everything's delayed. It feels like this whole year is canceled. Like nothing is like, really going yeah, on. Yeah, it feels that way, right? But we're still like reading scripts a right. lot more. Right. Um, getting a lot more phone calls in about future projects. Right. But when can we actually sit down at a table read and get it to you know happening? No one has a date. Everything right. is getting pushed out. Everything. Right. Mm -hmm. Even when they try to like set movie dates, that's getting pushed back. Like I'm. Following a uh, tenant by Christopher Nolan, he really wants that to be in the theaters. But with everything yeah. going on and like the limited amount of uh, theaters open, they have to Warner Brothers has to keep pushing it back to like different dates. So it's just really uncertain with everything going on. Yeah. So, yeah, with, with actors, you know, they're waiting to see the final product. Right. You know? That's got to be yeah. a great experience. Like, OK, I was asked right now, like, what was it like to be like doing all that work and to finally see Daredevil season one? 
through three or Punisher? Like, what was it like? How did you feel? Were you like... It's like you, man. I sit there and I watch Daredevil and I'm not involved in any stunts on Daredevil, but, you know, just to watch that fight scene in season one was oh, like that whole scene. I was like, wow, I'm a fan. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, wow. I, 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 I'm, I'm just amazed that because you do a take and you, you will be like, oh, you know, I, I felt really good with take two. And the camera guy is like, no, the way I captured you on take three, the way the angle was, that's going to look so cool. So you might have a little confrontation with him a little bit, right. just discussing the moment you may have felt. Right. But then when you see the final product of it, it's like, wow, man. I still have been arguing cool. with him. <laughs> you know what I mean? and, and the slow motion of the band falling. Right. You know, because it wasn't so fast. It was like a few seconds on the actual ambulance falling off the off the uh, hydraulics. Right. So it was like three seconds. But it lasted 15 seconds right. as you see the fall happening and the dust going in our eyes and stuff. And the, you know, the paper towels and, and everyone thought Brett was dead, you know? I thought, bro, I, I was about to say, I thought you were dead. Like, I thought he was done. And then no. when you, and then I was like, I was so relieved. I was a sigh of relief for me. I was like, thank yes. You, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank One of my you. favorite it characters was, on Daredevil, yeah. I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah. the work. I, I appreciate it. We, I mean, it, it's a fun experience, man. Uh, you know, being uh, – I had never been shot on camera before. You know, Madani pulls the gun out in the squid, and they, they set you all up. And then the stunt guy comes in, and he takes over from where you are. Right. It's a great – and to see it all come together, like knowing that's not the back of your head, but no one else knows that. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's, that's a great experience uh, to see those guys work and do their choreography, you know? Right. Yes. Yeah, of course. I love seeing it, too. Everything come together is just great. Yeah. Um, you, you know, people just look at it as an action show when there's a story to be told. You know, you right. guys have to like this and, and uh, know our backstory. So right. So that's important. Absolutely. Makes, makes the show even more better. Um, yeah. How has... So now we're going to get to more of the Marvel Defenders talk. How how had Marvel affected your life before Devil? Like, how did it influence you as a person and, you know, make you who you are? Well, first of all, sleep. <laughs> um, the, the, the schedule's changed. You know, you read a script and you see you have night shoots, day shoots. So yeah. you have to, like, adjust the schedule, you know. Um, you may have a, a 6 a.m. call or you may have an 8 p.m. call. So that right. means you're working overnight. So you try to get as much sleep as you can. Also, uh, you know, just going in a local Starbucks or something, yeah. you know, and you're getting the coffee and it's like, hey, wait a minute, I know you. You know, <laughs> you know you've worked like you've been in the biz for like 15 years, and now you're finally getting that kind of recognition. It's not right. like you're looking for it, but it's like right. you're on Daredevil, aren't you? And I'm like, really? How do you know that? It's like you're the cop. They don't really know my name. But they're like, you're the cop on Daredevil. Devil. I know you are. So that, that's, uh, that's pretty surreal in itself. You know, you work hard. You put out a finishing product. You, you follow your dream. And to get the recognition, to want to be interviewed, right. to, you know, want, you know, people asking, can they take a picture with you? Or, right. So it's, it's pretty surreal. And, you know, telling you that you, done, you did a great job. Because you don't hear that too much on television or film. On stage, you got an audience. They're clapping. Right. You know, you walk into the lobby. They're they're waiting to, for you to sign a program. Right. With television, you know, everybody's just working. You got the lighting guy. And right. And so you see the finished product, and have them say, "Hey, I love your character on Daredevil. I love your character on Punisher. Right. Defenders, Jessica Jones. Like you're one of my favorites. So to hear that, it, it makes it all worth the while. Yeah." Well, I could only imagine. Because, yeah, you're right. When you're on stage, it's like once you're done, once the scene is done, claps, roses, all that, lights, going, all, all that, all that. Yeah. You know, you get the laugh immediately. Right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know you the joke landed. Yeah. You know, the joke landed. But with television, you don't, you know, in, in film, you don't get that. Right. You know, you have to trust your peers who you're working with. Right. That they got the shot. Right. Because you and I could be in a scene. Right. And we knew we had a moment two of us, right. whether you use the camera or we had something. But we can't see it until we see the final cut. Right. And we was like, that was the moment. That was it. That right. was it, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's the difference between stage and, uh, and uh, film and television. Okay. Yeah, awesome. 
Um, so what was your knowledge of Daredevil going in? None. I had none. Uh, even, no, no, I just had none. Right. I, mean, I, I, had none. I knew about him, you know, uh, but I, I did most of the commercial reading, you know, like Spider-Man, Superman. Ah, yes, the main. Yeah, yeah. So Daredevil, to me, was more of the underground, you know, superhero. Right. So once I knew that I landed the role, I, that's when I started to go to the comic book stores and started reading up on this guy because right. you get the role, and now it's like, I got to, now I got to do it. You know? right. <laughs> I got to bring it to life. You know, I got to, right. you know, I'm signed up now. Right. So that's when, the, that's when you, you do your homework on that part. Right. Yeah. I want to ask this question, and I know it's very controversial. I really don't hear the cast get asked this question a lot. But what are your thoughts on Ben Affleck's Daredevil movie? Not, not on his movie. I thought, he's, I thought he did a great job. I think that he set the tone mm -hmm. to have a show to complete at, the, at that time. Right. But to be the first show on a, a, a Netflix, they were exploring something. They were right. trying something new. You know, the year was 2015. I love the diversity of the uh, of the characters on the show. Ben Yurick, myself. Yes. You know, other characters, not non traditional casting. Uh, so to 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 just piggyback on a few what other actors have said, I think that he set the tone to let the audience know who Daredevil was. Okay. Because before we could have just come out. Hey, it's Daredevil. And people are like, well, which one is that one? You know, or right. who is that? Right. So I think them doing the movie with Ben Affleck, I think, in a, in a Garner, right? Jennifer Garner? Yeah, she was a lecturer. Right, right, she was in it. So they set the tone to let the, the uh, audience know that this is what this character is. He's a blind lawyer by day and he's a vigilante by night. So they set the tone, did a great job to open up us having to do a series right. of Daredevil. Okay. Well, I never, yeah, <laughs> I get what you're saying. I go, yeah. Okay. I See, somebody, you know, has to set the tone. somebody has to set the pace, you know? Right. Because we could have came out with Jessica Jones first. It could have been Luke Cage first, but to set the tone for Daredevil lovers and who knew who Daredevil was, I'm glad there was an MCU version first. Just like right. the Punisher. There's, there's been like two Punishers, if, you right. know, introducing who he is. Because not everybody reads comics. Right. Right, right. I guess why well, I didn't think about it like that. My mom and I always go back and forth on a Daredevil movie. I say, no, this is it. No, I don't like this movie. And then she's like, well, I like this movie. We just go back and forth. So <laughs> I saw my ass, but, you know, I could be like, hey, Burn Mahoney doesn't like Daredevil. So, yeah. <laughs> say something like that. Well, if you, if you caught up, you see that Daredevil and Matt are, I mean, Daredevil and Brett are like, they're pretty much working together now as a team now. Right. So that's the, the how that story has evolved. In the right. beginning, no. No. Right. No, in the beginning. Especially the Punisher, you know, just to seeing how that story developed as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It sucks that they got canceled. It really does. Like, when I think about it, it's because there's, like, there's so many storylines that were unfinished that could have been finished, that they could have gone on, that they could have spun off, new things that they could have done. I don't know. I don't know why it got canceled. I've been look. I've been trying to figure out what's happening, because... I, when I looked into it, it said that the people who worked on Daredevil didn't know it was canceled until they were writing season four, and someone yeah. just came in the room and told them that, hey, it's done. And they were just like, what? Like, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's... Most of the time, actors are the last people to know. Uh, you know, they're, you know we, we, casting is, you know, they, 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 they put, they, they have names in mind when they start to write a show. And then when they start to cancel the show, these are like people that are in a room, Marvel, Disney, Netflix. Right. We're not invited to those, those type of meetings. Right. So when they make their decisions, you know, we get the phone call, the email to the agent. And uh, before we knew it, we got the can, man. Uh, we left on a high note. But oh, most definitely. Was, yeah, you know, it was, uh, it was just a, a, a sad time for all of us just when we were just building a camaraderie, a, a team, right. building a team together, and we got the plug. You know, we're not the first uh, right. to have the plug. And I was, I was interested to see where all of the characters went. You know, you know, did Brett Mahoney find out that Matt is Daredevil, right. or you know, or Bullseye character involved? Oh, that would have been so cool. What he, what he does, you know. So we were. I think Eric was in 
in the process of, you know, finishing up, you know, some of the season for season four. And then you get the call and that's what it is to be an actor. They can pull the plug at any time. Right. Because I remember yeah. when, what got the axe first? I think it was Luke, no. I think Iron Fist got announced that it was canceled first. And I think I remember hearing it and I was like, hold on, okay. <laughs> hold on. Chill out. Yeah. Then Luke Cage, yeah. I was like, okay. Just don't things touch, happened. Just don't. It was just like yeah. Avengers. Right. It was like Avengers. Everybody was disappearing. Yeah, left so. to right. So <laughs> Thanos snapped real quick. And it was like Thanos was just he's taking over, man. Right. I was like, oh no. Then Jessica Jones. I was like, he's next. Then Punisher. I was like, he's dead. That was next. There's no way he's next. And then lo and behold, there that was gone. Like broke, that. My broke my heart. Broke all of my hearts. You Absolutely. Know? Not, not just the cast. You're talking about hundreds of people, makeup right. artists. Teamsters and stuff like that that are just, you know, they're family. People are proud to say, hey, I work on that show. I would have you know, been too. Hold on. Wardrobe. I would have <laughs> been a wardrobe supervisor. You're like, that's the show I work on. Right. So, you know, everybody was heartbroken by it. You know, hopefully we haven't seen the last of Daredevil. Oh, gosh. I hope not too. Because I, with the recent announcement of the Schneider Cut, there's no reason this can't happen. Hold on, my point. Yeah. There's no reason this yeah. can't happen. There's literally nothing. Big up to the fans, man. I love the uh, – I'm speechless when I think about the campaign. Right. It's been going well. Everybody's been participating in it. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we find a platform and we're being heard. Absolutely. Yeah. As I mean, as a fan, being heard. And we can bring back the same cast. That would yeah. be great. That would be amazing. Look, if – I think Charlie – I mean, I think Charlie's an amazing daredevil. He is. He's amazing. He's perfect. I don't think there's anyone else, if I'm to be honest. There isn't. He's perfect. He's perfect. You know? Right. John Bernthal, the Punisher. Right. He's perfect. He's perfect. They said they always said that 50% of a show is cast. You know? Yes. So, Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin. I like... Oh. Woo! <laughs> Man, watching him... When I watched him do scenes, like, you know, just arriving on set, watching his scene... You know, it's feel like an actor taking a class. Like, he's so brilliant. Yeah. His ideas are brilliant. Uh, the directors we work with, it's a family, man. You don't go to every set where everyone gets along. Right. You know, where everyone's, you know, in fine tuning. We could talk about our day. We can have lunch together. Right. We can talk about the scene that we're going to be doing next week. Right. Yeah, you know, that's not, you're building a family here. That's three years. We've been doing it since. I think we started like 2014. I think yeah, it was like 2015. We're talking like six years, you know. Yeah, it's been it's been it, uh, yeah. I could tell that you guys had chemistry from the energy oh, yeah. in the room. I could really tell that y'all was like really friends, family, oh, like a second cool. family. Like, there's lots of jokes, man. <laughs> there's lots of jokes, lots of pranks, you know, lots of line flubbers. <laughs> yeah, I remember I was watching Save Daredevil. Which someone who was talking about it? There, I think it was the guy who plays. Um, who's the newspaper guy? Uh, dang, Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Yes, him. And he was like, there was Foggy was talking about a clip on tie or something, and they wanted to try it with him, but it didn't sound right with him. It just sounded better with uh, Foggy in it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, so I remember that. That was uh, that was towards me. Foggy got off the elevator, and he said, "Brett, you're wearing a tie, and it's not a clip on." When I first got promoted, remember? Right. Yeah. Hey, look, I'm not coming up with jokes, all right? What are you guys doing here? So the, just the dynamic of that yeah. makes you laugh. Like, Absolutely. Because I know Foggy and I, with that chemistry, that's Going a whole new story. Forth. Yep. The back, back and forth. forth. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Some of my favorite of Daredevil, just watching you two just like, you know, tussle <laughs> it up. That's some of my favorite, just to watch y'all go back and forth. That's when you trust the other actors, but you have to build that as an actor. You right. know, years of being on set, right. talking, sharing personal stories together. So when they say action, you know, sometimes we start laughing before we even start to speak our lines. Because I'm like, I know what you want. You want a favor. You know, so, right. what if I just tell you no for once, you know, and get out of my face? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's, 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 I love the dynamic, which, 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 even with Deborah Ann, you know, with Karen, you know, and with, with uh, Charlie. You know, such a professional uh, worker, hard worker, doing, you know, some of his own stunts. Right. That's great. You know, you, you got 
you got a different relay. I got I got sisters, you know. Right. Um, it's just so, and they're different. You know, it's a different dynamic that I share with each character on set. I've been blessed to be on both shows and have scenes with most of the actors. So to feel their energy is just great. Sorry. Hold no on. No worries. Yes. What's up? Oh, gosh. I knew this was going to happen. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> but sorry, it's my little brother. Um, no, no worries, man. Yeah. So what character traits of Brett Mahoney do you see in yourself? The uh, discipline, the matter-of-fact attitude, um, the work ethic, the 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 projection, the way I speak. Right. The writers learn that about you. Once you start doing a show like that, mm -hmm. they start to put words that you would say in your mouth. Right. And that's the beauty of it. We have a table read first of the script where you can you know ask questions after we read it, see how it sounds. And then there's some improv going on, you know, on set as well, you know. You know, I always talk about bald head bastard, you know, <laughs> on set looking for fist. You know, I, I didn't know what the sounds like that ball bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to say. Right. But they're not going to keep that. They can't possibly keep that. And then you watch and you're like, they kept it. it. <laughs> right. Yeah. But this on Twitter's on set. Um, those are some of the funny moments, man, that, right. you know, you guys will never get a chance to see oh, that we yeah. do. Or just not having a good night's sleep. I remember going to Charlie once saying, you know, I got no sleep last night, you know, because we have like a 12-hour turnaround right. shooting at night. And then you have a day scene the very next day, so you didn't get right. much sleep. Right. And he's like, well, Brett didn't get enough sleep. So we play that, you know? And and, it, and it's great that you can say, look, man, I'm tired. And you can say that on set, and they keep it, in the, you know, for the episode. I remember right. doing that with a, in, a, in an interrogation with a Karen Page. She's like, how you doing? I'm like, oh, it's been a long night, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm awesome. tired. Oh, yeah. yeah. Red's tied. He's overworked, you know? Right. Okay, that's really cool. I didn't think about all the improv that y'all could do and, like, fit in and stuff like that. Uh, like, yeah. that. I just think... I don't know. I just think stuff is scripted and stuff like that, but, you know... No, well, I would say 99.9% .9 of it is scripted. scripted. Right. You can always add something. Right. If, uh, you know, if you feel you need to, but you got to check with the writers. Yeah. Or, you know, in, your, in the moment, you say, you're saying something and, and the cameras are still rolling. And it makes sense. Right. Right. Yes. So what is your favorite Daredevil season? Did you think? Favorite? They, yeah. All of them. All of them. <laughs> you know, I mean, it keeps getting better and better. You know, uh, yeah. season one was uh, interesting. You know, we were finding our way yeah. with the characters and the relationships. Kind of getting your feet and, wet and stuff, you know. Like getting your feet wet. And like any show, you know, you keep it, you know, evolving, keep going further, 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 pushing the envelope, pushing the envelope. But I was just interested to see, you know, how far my character and, and all the other characters grow. You know, will Brett become the commissioner? Yeah. Or, oh, it's commissioner. You know, yeah. I, no, no, I'm serious because, you know, one fan said, you know, Brett Mahoney is the daredevil, but Jim Gordon is the Batman. You know, so. Perfect. That That's the, the perfect. That's perfect. That was the, that was the pro I, I had to repeat that. I said, wow, I didn't think of that. So just to see how that relationship goes and ending on a strong note like, that's not Daredevil. That's the real Daredevil. Like, to build that up yeah, was, uh, I was looking forward to, to seeing that happen. Right. The season. Did you, uh, what, mm, I'm trying to ask this carefully. Hold on. For season four, do you, uh, my phone. Sorry. For season four, is there anything that you know? Like, is there anything that they talk to you about? No, no, not at all. You know, uh, we didn't read a script. We had a, an appointment date to uh, do a first table read. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. So I have no clue what was to become of my character or any other characters okay. on the show. Right. But, I, I, you know, but I have a lot of questions to ask. You know, will Brett find out if Matt is the, vet, is the vigilante? Right. You know, and how would he, would he still, you know, have his back as he does? Right. Uh, does he even you know? Or will you ever see my wife or my mom more, you know? Right. <laughs> right. Or even with the Punisher, you know, like does he develop a soft spot and bend the rules a little bit just for uh 
the Punisher. Oh, yes. Because we see that, I mean, the Punisher literally saves my life, you know? Right. So to see how that energy is going to affect the next season. Right. I've heard a bunch of stuff about what they're planning. Uh, for Punisher, I heard for season three, they wanted Kingpin to be the main villain. So what was that going to be like, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. after, after what happened in season three where uh, Daredevil was like, hey, if you come out of prison, it's on. Like, I'm I, I'm telling on your wife. I'm snitching. I'm, I'm right. <laughs> I'm going to tell. Because right, right. Right. I know who you are at this point. Now, right. I mean, Vincent is just a pro, bro. It's like the, having LeBron James on set and you got Vincent on set. Right. Um, he, he gives you notes uh, uh, in your ear. If you have a question, you can always walk up to him. I mean, the guy, he's the kingpin on set, but he's one of the guys, he's like, my mom's like, I love you on Law and Order, Criminal Intent. And he gets on <laughs> food, and he's talking to my mom on the phone, and I'm like, he's like, Merry Christmas, Betty, you know. So that was that, that was beautiful that he's a big teddy bear, right. but then he could be this villain on right. the show. So, you know, they're right. real people, you know, um, they're real, real people. Absolutely. Um, what scenes in the show were the most emotionally demanding for you? I would say season three, mm. because it's going to keep getting higher and higher and higher and higher. Right. You know, you're going from a, a, a desk sergeant, becoming a detective, becoming a seasoned detective, where you've done enough classes and You've interrogated enough people, and the audience needs to see that. Right. And to let them know, hey, Brett's not a new detective anymore. When he's telling uh, Daredevil, hey, one day I'm going to tell you how to do your job, to I know how to do my job. You can right. trust me. With it. I've been a detective long enough. Right. So to see see my character grow in that way. Right. Awesome. To be able to read, to be able to read you know, suspects and stuff like that. Right. That would have been interesting to, to have. Right. One scene I think about is when you and uh, Foggy were on the roof and he was talking about how Daredevil was planning to kill Kingpin. I, I was thinking yeah. about that scene, how that was played. I was like, wow. That was powerful. It was, it was, it was, uh, I think it pulled a lot out of us because our plan failed and someone was killed. Right. You know, we, we, we thought we crossed every T, dotted every I, right. and the guy is murdered. I mean, mm. the, the boss and the Brett, it shows the, the, how, how far he's willing to go to catch the bad guy. Right. He's willing to hide, uh, you know, this agent in his mom's house. That's pretty, I mean, he's bending the lines here, man. He's, he's right. walking over, you know, to help catch this guy. This is just how bad he wants the kingpin locked up. And our plan failed. So up on site, the passion came out like foggy. We got someone killed, bro. You know, right. um, that was one of the moments that he and I, you know, it wasn't a joke. It wasn't a joke day. And right. for him to ask me to ask my fellow co-workers to pull security because Kingpin, they have a hit out on him now, was a lot to ask of me. Right. When I don't care, when Brett Mahoney doesn't care what happens to this guy right. at this point. So right. I thought it was a very, it was a very passionate scene when we, we talked about it. We didn't, you know, it was so passionate that if you notice, Brett Mahoney's not even looking at Bobby. He's looking, yeah, he's just yeah, he's just straight right. I can't even look at him. We 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 screwed up so big, I, you know. I could I could we could strangle each other at this right. point. You know what I mean? Like we we really screwed up this time, buddy. This is we're not joking around anymore. Right. This guy is bigger right. than we thought he was. Right. Yeah, just like when I remember we were talking about in the courthouse scene where the guy just came out and said everyone's address. Like, what Like what's, what yeah. do you do against someone like that? Like, what? There's no, I mean, what, what, he's just a, a, a local lawyer. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a detective. How can we fight against these big wigs that we're, you know, we're fighting against? Right. Some Wilson Fisk, you know, who, who, you know who, who has a percentage of New York, his connections. Right. Who doesn't mind killing an FBI agent wow. with the smart, you know, just calling? That's that's power that we don't, that Foggy and I just don't possess. Right. And we realize that at that moment. So to see him in handcuffs with the help of Daredevil was was just a, a magical moment for the viewers. Right. You know. Absolutely. Um, 
so Punisher, what yeah, what was your what was it like working with John and what what was it like seeing him transform into the Punisher from like John to like this guy who's like everyone's killed. He's just like brooding. He's like Batman with gun, like with a gun. Like how how, how was that like? John John's the real deal. Yeah, don't play with John. John is John does push ups, sit ups, and you know work with all the. I mean, I think that the the boy has like a platoon outside of his dressing room showing him how to work certain weapons. Man, the guys just that, that motivated. And he's one of the guys who, after the take, very sensitive to come to you and say, how do you feel about that take? Very generous actor to say, hey, I know what I've done. How do you feel about it? Do you think we need another take of that? Um, watching him work is, 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 is priceless, bro. Uh, he's very dedicated to the job. He wants to tell the story, and he wants it to come across, not just some guy shooting some gun, but there's a reason behind it. Right. So watching him grow from season two, you know, to season two of, I mean, season two of Daredevil, to season two of The Punisher, with the whole costume and the wardrobe and everything was just an, an, an awesome, an awesome experience to watch. I yeah. love it. I love to speak to him one day. That guy's crazy. He does amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the real deal, man. He, he wears it. And, and he, he holds himself to a standard, you know, to the police department to the military. There's a lot of people that walk around now with that symbol on their shirt. Right. And, he, and he feels that he has to portray this character, you know, till it's fullest. And he does. Yeah, he absolutely. Does. One of the, that, I think that's the best Punisher, in my opinion. Like, John just does amazing. He's great. Um, yeah. So let's say November comes. The phone's ringing. Pick it up. Daredevil is back. You're in the MCU. Who is one Marvel hero you would love to work with? One Marvel character? Like, the, the shows that I'm on? Or I would love to be on Spider-Man. I would love Brett to come out of the store and make an appearance with Matt as Daredevil and they include Brett Mahoney in there as well. Right. Because that's the only guy that uh, Daredevil truly trusts. Right. In his, in his, in his uniform is Brett Mahoney. Uh, even when I'm not around, he's like, go to the 15th precinct, ask, ask for Brett Mahoney. Right. So that feels good. So I think, you know, you get that call in November, I'm going to jump to the roof. <laughs> jump to the roof. Hey, look, me too. We we're <laughs> back, man. We're back. We've saved. Thank you, fans, for pushing for us, for fighting for us. And I think, that, man. I think we're going to make the stakes even higher for ourselves. Absolutely. Because, you know, being resurrected like that, you know, not many shows – Get, get a second chance. Absolutely. Yep. And if we were to get a second chance come after November, I think the phone calls are going to go to other cast members and the word's going to spread. And uh, that'll be a, a magical moment for us. It really would. For me, too. Because, bro, I'm just in my mind. I'm just thinking about what I would do. You would do. I mean, of course, you're going to be excited. But me, I, I've rewatched yeah. Daredevil at least 10 times. Like, I'm not even joking. Yeah. Wow, I rewatched wow. that show a lot. <laughs> I love Thank that you. Show. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. I love that show I so much. I, whenever I get the chance, hey, what have you not watched on Netflix? Oh, did it, watch that. <laughs> don't care. Watch that. I don't care. Watch, watch, watch that. Because the storyline is, is great, man. You it's know, amazing. Um, yeah. It's amazing. Just, you know, outside of the, the fighting and everything, I mean, this kid who goes blind and, you know, sticks who, you know, just because you have an impediment doesn't mean your life is over. Absolutely. You know? So, that just the storyline alone and uh, the revealing of how he became blind and being still surrounded by his family, not knowing it. Right. It, uh, it's still a great story just to tell. I mean, you could, you can drop that story anywhere without the fight. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What are some franchises you would like to work in one day? Franchises. Yeah. Uh, that were already established already? Yeah, like Star Wars I mean, or DC or, you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it all, as an actor, man, you know, a lot of times people don't know that we feel we can do everything. Right. It's being blinked at can we jump in that role? Will they, will they bring us on board? It's not what we don't want to do. Right. It's what we're blessed and allowed to do. Absolutely. But I would love to be in Avengers. I would love to be in, in Black Panther too. I would love to make an appearance in. I'm saying it to the to the world. I would love to be in Black Panther. 
Call him. Call him right now. <laughs> call him. Call, call Royce. Him. Call, you know Royce. I mean? call Royce. I'm ready to be in my Wakanda to speak my dialect. There you I'm go. Ready. Hey, he got it down too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to do so. <laughs> you know who I can see you as? I can see you as John Stewart for Green Lantern. I can see you as like a Green Lantern. I can see you as I would love that. I would love to put on a costume. Everyone always asks me, you know, does Brett have special powers? I'm like, we all got special powers. We all got special, yeah. Yeah, we all got something going on, whether it's, you know, uh, Professor X with his brain, yeah. you know, Wolverine. Well, everyone has a special power. So, yep. you know, I said, Brett, Brett is a man of integrity, right. you know, a, a trustworthy guy. He's that phone call you can make mm -hmm. and trust that it, it, it's kept confidentially between yeah. the two of them. So that's his special power. And he abides by the law. So, yeah, I would love to be in Greenland. You know, in the Mar I just love the Marvel Universe pretty much. Marvel DC. Cool, cool. DC, yes. Uh, and this is my last question for you. So this has been great. This has been amazing. <laughs> have, I've had so Thank much you. fun with you. Yeah. Yeah, actors are, we're nice, man. <laughs> yeah. We're, yeah. we're real people, man. <laughs> we work hard, man. Absolutely. Y'all put the work in. So what would your current message to the world be? We're in a pandemic. We have stuff going on with Black Lives Matter. There's a lot of chaos and just a lot of stuff going on in the world right now. What would you say to people right now, to everyone? I would say, you know, surround yourself with people that love you, you love. You know, listen to what's being told to you. Wash your hands. Social distancing. Uh, keep your immune system up. Wear a mask. Mm -hmm. Wear a mask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it'll be it'll be much clearer. I think the more we are informed, mm -hmm. the more we test it, the more this this too shall pass. Yes, I think that when we do start back up again, I mean, I'm speaking from my profession. There's gonna be there's gonna be roles. It's gonna be a great time to be an actor. Yep, there's gonna be so many platforms. There's Apple TV. There's Hulu. It's HBO FX. Max was like, it's, it's, it's it just Max, keeps getting bigger. Access. I mean, if you don't have a job as an actor, something's going to be wrong, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. you need to check yourself. But I think that uh, once we get things up and running again, I think it's going to be great for everybody. But, you know, we got to follow the rules. If we don't follow the rules, man, we're going to crash. Yeah. If I was driving a car, I can't pass the red light. I got to slow down Stop. when I see yellow. Right. Yeah to stop man so if we follow the rules i think that it'll 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 this too shall pass absolutely like everything yeah. well royce that's my last question thank you so much this has been an I honor it, and a privilege to be able to do this with you right now very it's been an honor again to speak to you one of my favorite characters on daredevil man punish for all that you know i appreciate it man hey, let, hey let's do this again bro you know yeah hey i'm so down like you're just you're a very nice person <laughs> i i could feel you you have a very positive energy and this was great you. thank you so much thank you so much thank you thank all you buddy right. God bless, man. You too. Have a great day, Royce. All right. Bye, you guys. Too. Bye. Bye.